Joining me is former LSU and NFL running back Jacob Hester for the final time during the regular season outside of a victorious LSU locker room. And I, I think when both of us came to the stadium tonight here on Thanksgiving, we, we neither one of us expected to see the offensive display we saw tonight. No, not at all. LSU's offense showed up on every series. I mean, what they did last week was totally forgotten. They scored points when they were in the red zone. Darius guys had another monster game, breaking the record. You know, that record stood for 10 years, and it's been broken three times already this year between guys at Arkansas, Fournette, Ole Miss in this game. Truly amazing what they're able to do on offense tonight. Well over 600 yards of total offense for LSU, but it's going to be the one yard they didn't get last week. Unfortunately, that is going to affect not only this season, but potentially lives of coaches. Oh, you're exactly right, and that's what frustrates you because you see this LSU offense. You see how powerful they can be at times, how physical they can play, and then to come up one yard short last week. So uh, it's going to be a yard that's talked about for a long time, and like you said, it's going to affect a lot of lives. If if uh, there is a coaching change after this ball game, uh, this is one heck of a way to go out because uh, you know the the offense did everything it wanted, and of course the defense was outstanding in the first half. Obviously got away from him in the second half but but this was a dominant performance even though they gave up a lot of points it was a dominant performance oh yeah Texas A&M is a good football team they're eight and three football team you lose the way you did last week and able to bounce back on the road on a short week I mean that's that's a telltale sign of a good football coach and so coach Ogeron got these players ready to play and if this is his last game in LSU you said what a way to go out I mean you can't go out bigger and better than this there's going to be some talk on that Texas A&M side too uh, you know coach Summerlin uh, this year didn't go the way they thought it would and they hang they give up over 50 to an LSU offense that struggled against Florida and Alabama and Wisconsin and others during the year this isn't going to bode well for their program either no not at all look he, he's kind of had the MO now of being really good in September and October October and then when November comes when it gets physical when it gets tough football they don't play well I mean they are losing three or four games in November each and every year and like you said this might put him in trouble because yeah you might start six and zero, but if you're, you're finishing with eight wins after a six no start it's not a good recipe Darius guys let's talk about him you played the position you know how hard it is to get those yards out there in the SEC especially on the road and uh, had they gotten the ball back it have gone over 300 I mean amazing performance oh he's a rare talent I mean he's one of the best running backs I've ever seen at the collegiate level the way he can break tackles I mean not only the first guy that hits him but he's breaking tackles 10 12 yards down the field he's hitting spin moves he's out running people for a guy his size to have those abilities it's unheard of who knows where LSU is going to land in the bowl situation we'll have to wait about nine days to figure that out but uh, offensively they're got to be feeling really good this Danny Etling that, he looked like Drew Brees out there tonight you know Danny's really put two games back to back together actually three if you go back to the Arkansas game where he's played good football did he set the world on fire last week against Florida no but he threw over 200 yards he comes out tonight those for over three 300 yards he's really starting to come into his own and uh, you know he's still got another year uh, left and whoever the LSU coach is it'll be interesting to see how much more he grows as a quarterback. If your coach Ogeron you couldn't have done any more this week to make a statement he's going to be going into supposedly a meeting tomorrow have an opportunity to interview for the job and out and put out there his plan for the future for LSU football it, it couldn't have been any better for a guy to show look we can take strides offensively. Yeah and, and he's going to have a lot of arguments saying hey if I get a whole season if here, here's my game plan here's my coordinators on each side here's my special teams coordinator if I get this job this is who I'm going to bring in this is who we're going to be he hasn't had that opportunity yet so it's going to be an interesting meeting and Joe Oliva look you, you got to take a look at coach Ogeron just what he's done the last couple years LSU to lose the games they have and not be able to bounce back he's bounced back twice this year alone and it's, it's impressive well, we know the players want to see Coach Ogeron back. We know a lot of the fans, particularly south of I-10, want to see Coach Ogeron back. We'll find out what happens. Well, happy Thanksgiving to you and the family. Safe drive back to Shreveport. Yeah, you as well. All right, let's go back to Louisiana Cat Studios.